This video was brought to you by Brilliant, and the first 200 people to sign up using the link below will get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Since we last did a video on Ukraine, neither side has made much territorial progress. In the east, the Russians were struggling to make much progress towards Kramatorsk and Slovyansk, the two remaining holdouts in Donbass. And in the south, Ukrainians were struggling to advance into Kurzon, the regional capital that was captured by the Russians in February. However, while there haven't been many territorial changes in the last couple of weeks, two things have happened which have tilted the war in Ukraine's favour. One, the increased effectiveness of Western manufactured mobile missile systems, and two, plans recently announced by the Ukrainian government to mobilise far more troops in support of the offensive in Kurzon. So in this video, we're going to be taking a look at both of these developments, whether they'll be enough to counter Russia's overwhelming advantage in firepower, and how they might change the trajectory of the war going forward. But before we get into those recent developments, a quick recap. As we detailed in our previous video on the subject, in June, Russian forces successfully captured the towns of Severodonetsk and Lysychansk, the last Ukrainian holdouts in the Luhansk Oblast. In a marked contrast to earlier advances, which basically involved speedy mechanized assaults, the Russian offensive here was significantly slower and relied on Russia's overwhelming artillery advantage. Basically, Russian forces would sit outside the town or city, bombard it with artillery for a while, and only send in forces once it had been softened up. While this method requires a lot more time and ammunition, it makes sense from a Russian perspective. While the Russians don't have an overwhelming manpower advantage, they have an 8 to 1 artillery advantage, according to Ukraine's International Legion. Anyway, having taken Lysychansk, the Russians turned their attention towards Kramatorsk and Slovyansk, the last two remaining holdouts in the Donetsk Oblast. After those two, their next target will likely be Bakhmut, a small town with a pre-war population of about 70,000 people, that lies about 35 kilometers southeast of Kramatorsk. True to form, the Russians have spent the last few days bombarding the town with their artillery, although they've so far made no actual advance on the town. However, while it originally looked like Kramatorsk and Slovyansk might suffer the same fate as Severodonetsk and Lysychansk, that is, weeks of shelling before an inevitable Russian takeover, the increased effectiveness of Western manufactured mobile missile systems, and especially American HIMARS systems, have made things significantly more difficult for the Russians. In the last week or so, Ukrainians have successfully destroyed 14 Russian ammo depots, according to the BBC. This has all been made possible by the arrival of Western-made mobile missile systems, which have a range of about 50 kilometers. Now, this is particularly bad news for the Russians, because as we mentioned a second ago, Russia's artillery-focused advances are particularly ammo-intensive. Russian howitzers are expending an average of 20,000 shells a day, compared to 6,000 fired by Ukraine. And the ratio for rocket artillery and ballistic missile launches is even worse. If Ukraine can continue destroying Russian ammo depots, then Russia won't be able to afford its costly artillery barrages. And we saw that earlier this week, when the intensity of Russian artillery in Kurzon fell off significantly presumably because of Ukrainian strikes on Russian ammo dumps. A similar thing also happened around Slovyansk and Kramatorsk, with Ukrainian forces successfully destroying a bunch of Russian ammo dumps, and then the number of fires falling drastically earlier this week. And while the HIMARS have predominantly been used to slow the pace of the Russian advance in Donbass, in Kurzon, they've apparently opened up a whole new possibility for a full-on Ukrainian assault. Which brings us to the other development worth noting, the recent change in tone from the Ukrainian government. For most of the war, while Zelensky's administration have made it clear that they think they can win, they've mainly been asking for more weapons to stem the Russian advance. 
However, in early July, various Ukrainian officials started issuing warnings that residents in Kurzon should leave the area, pr apparently presaging a Ukrainian assault on the city. In a similar vein, the Russian defense minister claimed on Sunday that Ukraine's army was hundreds of thousands of troops larger than when the war began, and that Ukraine now had a million people ready to fight. While Ukrainian forces have been making minor incursions on the Kurzon Oblast, a full-scale assault had previously looked unlikely. However, with Ukrainian forces successfully targeting Russian ammo dumps and command posts around Kurzon City, and the prospect of a million more soldiers, a Ukrainian command has apparently decided that a full-scale assault in Kurzon is now at least looking feasible. Now, we should take these reports with a pinch of salt. It's possible that Ukrainian officials are talking a big game about Kurzon in order to dampen Russian morale, or to get Russians to redeploy forces from Donbass into Kurzon. It's also worth saying that while Ukraine's army definitely has grown, and more Ukrainian troops are currently being trained in the UK and US, a million does sound a bit optimistic. Nonetheless, it's clear that the arrival of Western-made missile systems has changed both the attitude of the Ukrainian government and the trajectory of the war, just as Ukrainian officials always said that they would. So, what happens next? Well, a lot will depend on whether the Russians can find a way to nullify these HIMARS systems. According to US intelligence, Russia has agreed to buy hundreds of thousands of drones from Iran, previously used by Houthi rebels against the Saudis in Yemen, presumably planning to use these to counteract the HIMARS systems. Whether these drones will really help the Russian war effort will depend on both Ukrainian tactical nous and whether the West continues to provide arms to Ukraine. Ultimately though, as always, this is a problem-solving issue, something which is always at the heart of politics, whether it be keeping the electorate happy or trying to handle wartime crises. So if you want to be able to do what politicians often can't, then consider signing up to Brilliant. That's the STEM learning platform which actually features a class on the joy of problem-solving. In that class, like all of their others, they use active learning techniques to help you learn complex subjects, like logical reasoning, deducing facts from fiction, and logic puzzles, with you learning through fun and engaging activities. These interactive classes cover all kinds of STEM topics too, from computer science and cryptocurrency, to statistics and casino probability. So if you want to take your next step in STEM and support the channel at the same time, then you can sign up to Brilliant at brilliant.org forward slash TLDR EU. And the first 200 people to do so will get 20% off an annual premium subscription. Thanks for your support.